fixing the brokenomics of the play to earn gaming model is a pretty tall task, but that is what Honeyland here is aiming to do. So today we're going to dive into it, go through the white paper, all the details, all this game has to offer and let you know whether or not this is going to be the future of Web3 gaming as they so boldly claim. What's going on? The Ape Coach from Six Pack Gaming, where we bring you the best play to earn NFT games and new metaverse projects. Now, today we are diving back into Honeyland. We did a you know general overview of this in the last video but today we are going to be diving deeper going through the white paper letting you know everything this game has to offer in addition to that we are going to be drawing the winner of the free genesis nft b from the previous video and if that wasn't enough we talked to the team we decided you know one genesis b just wasn't quite enough so you guys are going to have another chance to win a free genesis nft b so be sure to stick around for that. Of course, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe and got notifications turned on. And let's dive right into this. Here we have Honeyland, the world's first rewarding Infiniverse. As we talked about in the previous video, we'll go over a brief overview here. So again, there's sort of the core activities in the game are going to be harvesting, hunting, attacking, and mating. Those are kind of the core fundamentals. You're also going to have uh, land assets. You're going to have the honey token the native token you're gonna to have staking rewards all kinds of cool stuff missions commissions marketplace the honeyverse and uh this is part of what they call hexagon studios and apparently honeyland is just the first of many uh games so we are going to dive into the white paper now and let you know everything that honeyland has to offer honeyland is a play to own strategy game built on the solana blockchain that offers or uh, that opens the door to the honeyverse and this is actually a live gameplay demo that uh the cmo Corey had um had displayed so you can see this is like a mobile app looks very clean you know very bright and vibrant and then we'll just kind of skip ahead here and you can see you know some of the different functionality you've got all your different plots of land or all these little hexagons um you can kind of go around and see you know there's different missions there's different resources and stuff in here um i guess nft drop rates and uh time it takes you know all all sorts of things and you can kind of select what bees you want to send to what lands um i believe that's like the harvesting mode right and then there's also like hunting there's missions and um here's the uh the mating there i just skipped past it but uh here we go yeah so they're mating and uh so there is going to be breeding mechanics as well so that kind of gives you a little bit of an overview here honeyland is a mobile first blockchain strategy game which i think is you know very important for this type of game uh you know these sort of like resource management strategy games aren't something you know since like age of empires like it, it's not there's not a lot that are like played on the pc you know with a full setup and that sort of thing um these are meant to be a little bit more you know casual not super time intensive and you know Corey from honeyland has mentioned several times the idea behind it is you know for players to be able to spend you know five to fifteen minutes you know five to 15 times a day essentially right so you can kind of play as much or as little as you prefer but it's not going to be something that you have to sit here and grind for hours and hours and hours so it's a little bit more of like a casual strategy game in that sense resource management staking all that sort of stuff play to own is an improvement on the play to earn model made popular by axie infinity where players will find more value in owning the assets they're earning than taking their earnings outside of the game or ecosystem in honeyland there are three main ways that players can earn honey and nfts so you have missions that we talked about so there's harvesting missions hunting missions and attack missions so players select the most optimal land to harvest select the bees from their hive and embark on a harvesting mission uh, they deploy their bees on the harvesting mission proper strategy and active management will allow players to earn more honey in shorter time so this is kind of like a DeFi staking uh sort of idea but the way you sort of strategize what bees go where and um you know the more actively you manage it you can basically in increase the speed of your returns from that okay then there's hunting missions so players select the most optimal land to hunt for honey pots um they select their bees again and send them out and each bee will earn one honey pot per hunting mission but again proper strategy and active management will allow players to earn them in shorter times honey pots act similar to a loot box where they contain shards that can be traded for nfts in the honeyland primary marketplace so that's pretty cool you send them out on a honey on a hunting mission you get a honey pot and you know you collect basically shards from that that you can uh, put together to form an nft and then there's the attack mission so players choose three bees from their hive to build their attack squad 
Uh, they'll be shown three defense squads that have been set by the other players with their same hive level. Uh, the player can choose which one they would like to attack. These are high risk, high reward missions that generally have negative expected value for the attacking player, but can also be the fastest way to earn honey. Okay, so if you want to do basically a wager match, uh, a PvP battle, other players will have defense squads essentially staked on their land um, or like set to protect their land and defend. The attacking squad will get to select from one of the defense squads they want to fight. Uh, there is like a skill based matchmaking system based on this hive level um and then you're gonna be able to attack and you know kind of winner takes all for who gets the honey and then there's land ownership which we talked about a little bit in the past but essentially landowners can get a commission uh, and earn anywhere from zero to ten percent of the honey that is harvested on their plot of land and then there's entry fees as well so they can set an entry fee between zero and one uh honey i guess for hunters who enter their plot of land to find honey pots so then breeding of course which um you'll need a queen bee plus a bee plus honey so you're gonna need multiple nfts plus the honey tokens to be able to breed and new bees okay and then these can be used for missions to earn more rewards or sold in the marketplace uh for honey as well so those are sort of the main concepts here. You've got missions, land, and breeding. Let's talk about their NFTs. So it starts with Genesis Bees, and this is what one of you will be winning in this video, and we'll be doing a giveaway for another one of these Genesis Bees. So here they are. The Genesis Bee Collection is limited to 1,000 Queen Bees and 10,000 regular bees. Uh, these will be the rarest NFT collection and provide the most utility and value for the NFT owner. They will have a separate contract from other Honeyland NFTs in order to keep their value high. Genesis bees will be introduced as Genesis bee eggs, which can be used to mint a Genesis bee in the Honeyland egg hatching machine. Uh, Genesis bee eggs can be hatched in whichever universe hatching machine the owner chooses. Genesis bee eggs will be released over the course of several drops, with approximately half being minted before the release of the game and the other half being minted after the launch of the game. So you can check out the uh, Genesis collection on both Fractal and Magic Eden marketplaces, which are kind of the two top marketplaces on the Solana network. And you can see none of these are like revealed yet. These are all just like eggs. So, um, you know, clearly, <laughs> these guys are some queen bees here and then you have the uh the regular bees there as well all right but that kind of shows you the varying price um about six solana right now as the uh low and then up to you know 30 to 60 potentially for the uh, queen bees there after the genesis bees the next one will be the generational bees so it says the first generation bees will be introduced as first generation bee eggs again which can be used to mint a first generation bee in the hatching machine um and these will be introduced with um, each new universe as they're opened up in Honeyland. Okay, so each universe will have 500 first generation queen bees and 5,000 first generation bees um, prior to the opening of the universe. Over time, more first generation bee eggs will be introduced through hunting missions and minting events as needed to ensure a healthy population of first generation bees in each universe. Uh, players will also be able to breed their bees to mint new second generation and third generation bee NFTs and can be used in Honeyland, um, you know, or traded on the market. Okay, then we have the land, which this was the um, sale that just happened happened last week there so honeyland has eight universes each will approximately have 4,000 plots of land totaling about 32,000 across all universes each plot of land will be represented by an nft the value of each plot will be very will vary based on the traits it possesses so land will be the primary mechanism for how honey and nfts will enter honeyland each plot of land will yield a certain amount of honey and honey pots which contain shards that can be converted into nfts in each game period um, other players will be able to pay a commission or an entry fee in order to harvest and hunt on their land as new lands and universes are unlocked land will have having events that will decrease the amount of honey and honey pots they produce in each game period provided the value of honey continues to increase over time this will not hurt the long-term value of the land land nfts will be made available via a minting process for the initial purchase new universes and plots of lands will be unlocked according to the having schedule in order to accommodate the growing populations and then new land drops will be announced ahead of time um, each land drop some land will be available to the public while the other land will be available only to players who meet certain criteria so other nft ownership staked honey completed challenges etc so 
then there's game items so the most common type of nfts will be game items these will be minted through uh honeyland primary marketplace by converting shards collected in the hunting missions to nfts these game items will include nfts that are used during gameplay to earn more will upgrade the utility of a player's other nfts or will provide a vanity cosmetic upgrade to the player's assets so these are going to be and then the last thing they have here is honeyland passes and so it says these were sold to the public in the honeyland swag store and we're given to advisors investors team members that sort of thing and each comes with increasing benefits which include um, whitelist benefits in-game benefits such as airdrops land access fee reductions etc and uh, community benefits which which are like you know special discord channels private amas with the team and stuff like that and perhaps irl benefits with swag um, certain events and stuff like that in the future now queen bees and bees so by the sounds of things, you're going to need one of each to be able to breed. You're going to need a queen bee plus a regular bee to be able to make offspring bees. So each player will have one active queen bee for their hive. The queen bee is necessary for breeding, creates synergies with her colony and that can increase their ability to earn and can reduce the cooldown time of male bees after completing missions. However, the queen bee does not participate in Honeyland missions. Queen bees are also necessary in order to explore new universes. Players must have a queen bee from, their, from the universe they wish to explore in order to play and earn on that universe genesis queen bees will be able to explore all eight universes regardless of which universe she is from so that is pretty crazy if you get a genesis queen bee you can go to all the different um, universes as they come out and then regular bees each player will have a colony of bees that perform missions uh, to bring back honey and honey pots to the hive players will be encouraged to grow and upgrade their colony of bees over time to perform more missions and earn more game rewards so generations, there are five generations of bees, first generation, second, third, and starter Z. Every bee in Honeyland has a generation. The higher the generation, the higher the game utility. Additionally, each generation has a specific breeding stats multiplier that is determined by their generation. The higher the generation, the better multiplier their offspring will get. So, so now it says, you know, Genesis bees and the first generation bees we already talked about, those will be introduced through, you know, regular NFT minting in the hatching machine, but all other bees will be introduced via breeding or starter packs. And during the breeding, the generation of the offspring will be determined by the generation of the male bee used in the breeding process so if you have a male genesis b their offspring will be a first generation if the male is a first generation then their offspring will be a second generation etc etc each of the bees um, will have breeding limits um, with the exception of the uh, genesis bees so the male genesis bees and genesis queen bees can breed unlimited number of times but the cost does go up every time you breed and then there's also a breeding cost multiplier um, with each new universe essentially um, and then each generation you go down you know a first generation can breed 18 times second 12 and then six and three respectively and it does say the exact breeding limits and cost may change prior to the game launch and this is something that i would be the most concerned with um, this seems like a lot, a lot, a lot of breeding with these, you know, unlimited for Genesis males and queens. Um, they would have to make the cost like increase exponentially to the point where it just doesn't make sense to breed them that many times. Um, and having this as like 18 times and 12 times, like these all seem extremely, extremely high. Uh, we've already seen, you know, the hyperinflation of, you know, NFT populations in Axie Infinity, in Peg Axie, in, you know, virtually every game so far that has attempted this breeding uh, mechanism in their games. So this would be the biggest concern to me is how they're planning on controlling the population and holding value in those NFTs without, um, you know, creating inflation of NFTs that just devalue them to nothing. But nevertheless um that doesn't mean that uh you know the the breeding mechanism can't work it's just you know they've they've got to really really uh consider how they're uh handling that so um there is also eight traits for each uh each bee which will help determine its utility in game so there's health capacity agility attack defense recovery endurance and luck um so luck is you know to help with finding honey pots in uh hunting missions um, as well, there's other traits. So there's generation, obviously, there's the universe they come from, uh, landform specialties. So this is where some of that strategy comes in. So this determines the type of land the bee is most suited for. So it says when this matches a plot um, for harvesting or hunting, it'll increase their stats. So kind of cool to have like, you know, uh, land based buffs, like specialties and that. Um, they're also going to have likes and dislikes, um, a mood, 
as well as attack profiles, mating, and upgrades. So um, those are kind of all the stats here. And then there's different parts as well. So there's head, eyes, mouth, body, hand, feet, background. So this is all kind of, you know, very similar to something like Axie Infinity, if you're familiar, but essentially they're just going to have different um, B parts and you're going to be able to customize them, make them look cooler, all that sort of stuff. Now let's get into the land. So again, we already mentioned it's about 32,000 plots of land across eight universes and each is an NFT. You can earn honey and all that sort of stuff. There is different traits for these as well. So there's universe, landform, um, honey production speed. So that's pretty cool. It shows how quickly honey will um, will be added to the land as it's being harvested by bees. Uh, it shows the drop time, the distance from hive, the opening condition, the entry condition, commission fee, and entry fee. So all things to consider if you're a landowner or if you're someone who's sending your colony of bees to go harvest or hunt on another land. These are going to be all things that you're going to want to take into consideration um, for the whole sort of strategy side of things. And then they also mentioned the having events. So 60 days after game launch they're going to unlock the remaining 2000 lands in universe one 180 days after game launch unlock all of universe two 300 days universe three so they've got a plan basically for the next three years um to unlock all eight universes uh, over the next you know two and a half to three years so uh it is cool to see that they already have planned that far in advance there is going to be a bunch of different in-game nfts they're each going to have different rarities common rare super rare epic or legendary the more rare the more advantageous obviously so there's going to be bee eggs queen bee eggs so you're actually going to be able to find new bees um royal jelly which could be used in the breeding process to breed a queen bee so the rare the nft again the higher the queen bee stats so that's kind of cool you can use royal jelly and you can actually breed your own queen bee so you don't have to have you know one of the original 1000 or whatever it is um and then there's upgraded traits as well so each bee has eight traits uh there are upgrade nfts for each of these traits which will level up that specific trait for whichever bee that player chooses the rarer the nft again the bigger the stat upgrade each bee can have anywhere from 10 to 20 upgrades depending on the max upgrades they're born with while upgraded stats will make the bee more useful in gameplay the original trait stats will be used in the breeding process okay so um breeding will affect basically your bees like hunting and harvesting and that sort of thing um, but it's not going to carry over into the offspring of your um of those bees when you breed them those were just the upgrade items then there's also gameplay items so there's going to be a poison bomb a cursed honey drop a shield and a sonar buzz so using the poison bomb will decrease the agility of any bees who are harvesting on the same plot uh the rare the poison blah 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 uh cursed honey drop which is will decrease the luck of any bees who are hunting on the same plot a shield will make sure the player's hive cannot be attacked by other players and a sonar buzz will uh, make the process of finding optimal plots of land to harvest and hunt much easier by providing a visual overlay to identify lands that are not currently at capacity also land items this is kind of ways to um, buff your land if you're a landowner as well so there's the paradise maker which will double the agility of any bees harvesting on the land um there's the extreme paradise maker which can only be used on extreme lands uh, so the regular paradise maker can't be used on extremes they have an extreme one to use on there and that uh cuts the drop time of honey pots in half while in use and then there's also sweet nectar which actually adds an additional one percent commission or 0.1 honey to each entry fee above what is listed or shown to the players harvesting and hunting on the land while in use so that's kind of crazy that's like you know it makes you earn more but then i feel like that also makes means the players you know unexpectedly have to pay a higher fee without knowing it so i don't know exactly how that'll work but um cool concepts to also have like land buffs uh player sort of buffs mission buffs and then also like breeding and upgrade items as well and then of course there's uh cosmetic items that will be kind of regularly added to uh the marketplace and all that sort of stuff so we kind of went over all the different sort of nfts and items and things so there is quite a lot here you've got queen bees you've got bees you've got all different generations they each have their own traits and parts you've got lands with multiple different traits and different universes and then you also have all those different game items you've got upgrades you've got um cosmetic items you've got land buffs you've got um uh actual game items to improve your missions and and harvesting and all that sort of stuff as well let's go over uh the actual gameplay here 
and just kind of you know see so as we mentioned it says five to 15 times per day for five to 15 minutes at a time so it's not like you're gonna have to be you know grinding this thing out all the time it's just you can kind of check in set your stuff up and let them you know harvest or hunt or whatever and then you're good to go and then you know you can check back a little bit later once they're done collect your nfts your items and whatever go back do it again and that sort of thing right so it's not going to be something that you got to sit here and like really grind out and you know it's not an mmo right uh it's just like a strategy based resource management type thing hunting harvesting gathering breeding building your colonies all that sort of stuff right so here is the core missions we already went over you know the basics of all of these one thing to note though is the attack missions are only unlocked once players have upgraded to what they call a beamium account and have more than 10 bees in their colony so initially you're just going to have the hunting and harvesting until you build up your colony enough to uh, be able to unlock the attack missions okay so that's like the pvp battles the wager matches essentially um and then there's just a bit more about harvesting and hunting here so uh bees can receive a reduction in cooldown time on harvesting hunting or attack based on the generation of the active queen bee in their hive during their cooldown so it says you know genesis queen bees get a 25 percent reduction in cooldowns uh first generation is 15 second generation eight and then the rest are just zero so if you can get you know first second or genesis queen bee you're going to be able to redo those missions a lot quicker so that's uh good to know um again you can select the land that you want to harvest on based on you know the traits of your bees the traits of the land etc and um that's kind of what that was saying there as well and you know it's pretty much as simple as you know you select it you send your bees there it shows you how much time it's going to take you can see here it's like two hours four hours three hours and um you know so it's going to be basically just like we said you know just a staking sort of thing and then claiming honey once a bee returns to the hive from a mission the honey collected less the land commission and any other fees uh will be available to be claimed by the player in order to claim the honey the player must simply log into the game and click claim in their rewards at which point some animations will take place to allow the player to manually add the honey to their hive or expedite the process by simply returning to the hive home screen uh, since player rewards will have a locked emission schedule unlocked honey will then be available for the players to use as they wish locked honey will be added to the player's locked honey balance so there's going to be i guess hunting again same sort of thing the genesis you know the different generation of queen bees will affect your cooldowns uh you select the land select you know the bee for the hunting and then you go and get honey pots and shards so again there's different rarities of honey pots a common honey pot will contain two shards rare four to six and all the way up to a legendary which will contain 25 to 35 shards so more than 10 times a common if you find a legendary uh the shards contained in each honey pot will be randomly distributed across 16 types of nft game items so you basically have a chance of getting any of the game items from the shards so b shards two and a half percent queen b egg shards uh 15 percent royal jelly shards five percent etc etc um you know basically anywhere from 1.5 percent up to eight percent to get one of these items from those shards as players accumulate in each of these types of game items they'll be able to redeem or fuse them for the in-game items you know that they relate to so uh the amount of shards needed to fuse into a game nft varies by the item uh but the minimum for any type of game item will be 15 shards for a common 30 shards for a rare 60 for a super 125 for epic and 250 for a legendary and shards cannot be traded sold or transferred to other players so you know you're gonna go and do these hunting missions collect all these shards from the honey pots and then you have to use them to form some sort of nft in order to have anything that you'll be able to like resell to others or you know actually utilize in the game in other ways hunting on extreme lands are different from every other land so each extreme land will produce honey pots that only deliver a single type of upgrade item each day so each extreme land will randomly have one of the nine types assigned to it each day so this will make it easier for players to collect shards of a specific upgrade rather than having to collect them you know randomly from all different nine types of upgrades you can just go whenever the day is that you know say you want an agility upgrade or whatever whenever the day is that there's uh special agility upgrades on the extreme land you can go and you know attack that land hunt it essentially and um you know get your agility uh items right your upgrades 
okay and so it says this will allow teams and guilds to communicate and complete and compete daily to find the most desirable lands based on which ones are producing the most desirable shards for the player that day uh, should be noted extreme lands will still produce cosmetic shards as well as gameplay item shards but any upgrade shards will be concentrated to a specific upgrade each day okay so you're still going to get other types of um item shards from that as well but it's going to be one specific upgrade item and that's where you're gonna find those attacking so the attacking is pretty simple here um like we said you have to have at least 10 uh bees in your colony and have been playing the game for at least seven days so you know not that extreme uh i think the breeding the 10 bees would probably take the longest time to acquire rather than just playing for seven days but uh, I don't know because the game isn't out yet. So building an attack squad, attacking player can choose any three bees from their hive and uh, they'll look to choose bees with, you know, high health, attack, defense, and agility. And the, you know, these are the most effective skills for winning the raid. Choosing the bees that have matching likes and dislikes will also create boosted stats for the attack mission. So you're gonna have to strategize, try to get bees with the same likes and good stats to, you know, help your attack, your defense, your health, all that sort of stuff. But once you choose your attack squad, then you have to choose which defense squad you wanna go against, okay? So there's gonna be three different squads that you can try to choose, you know, the best one for yourself, but each of the defense squads will have five bees in it. So you're gonna be going up three against five to try to, you know, take stuff from their land, essentially. So three of these bees will be the bees on the defense squad and two will be decoys that will not participate. Oh, okay, so this is a little bit different than I thought. Um, so two are decoys, so you could, you know, waste time attacking bees that, you know, don't aren't real. Uh, this creates an additional element of strategy for attacking and defending players. So how much honey the hive has, the health attack, defense, and agility stats of each of the five beasts in the defense squad. These are the things you want to analyze as an attacking player. Uh, the landform specialty, the likes, dislikes of each of the five bees, and the maximum amount of honey the attacking player can lose if they get defeated. So this will give the attacking player a good idea of the possible outcomes. However, because of the decoy bees and the randomness of attack profiles, the outcome will still be unknown. So once the player selects a defense squad to attack, the raid will begin and the player can watch the raid happen. So this is just a um, an auto battler sort of thing. You don't have to be in there actively battling and stuff. So again, it's all kind of designed to be a li little more casual, not so time intensive. This is a little bit more on the raids. So there's the raid sequence, there's the readiness meter, which determines the order in which the bees get to attack and the attack profile um, determines which bee the attacking bee will attack. So again, that's kind of randomized. So um, yeah, you'll basically just see them kind of battle it out and hopefully you're able to defeat the defense squad really big thing to pay attention to is the landform advantages and disadvantages so each bee has a landform specialty which really affects you know how they perform in their attacks and stuff so a landform one from the planes will get a 30 percent reduction in attack stats when attacking a bee in landform two but get a 30 percent boost in attack when attacking a bee uh with landform three and then have no advantages with a defending bee um that has any other landform so there's all these different sort of landform um you know boosts and uh and buffs and debuffs essentially based on where you're from and where you're attacking and they kind of lay it out here so you know this again will be another thing that you really want to strategize on uh both plateaus and valleys have a 50 percent boost to each other so if you have like a bunch from plateau and you're attacking valleys i mean you know you guys are both going to be boosted against each other but then these ones it's kind of this cyclical uh buff debuff sort of thing here so again another way to strategize in the game the breeding so this will give a little bit more insight on you know how this is going to function and you know perhaps the sustainability that they plan for with this because again like i said that would be my biggest concern is just being able to uh control the population in the proper way to avoid that hyperinflation of nfts that we've seen in so many of these other play to earn games so um again they all have different sort of stats and traits and rarities and those will affect sort of the offspring stats so you guys can kind of read through that there's no sense going through each one of those um you're because you're gonna have to kind of work with what you've got and just kind of 
you know, figure out which is going to be the best to breed together. You've got the different breeding cooldowns. So similar to what we've seen in, you know, Pegaxi and other things, you know, 24 hours breeding cooldown for all the first breeds, then 32, 40, 48, yada, yada, all the way up to 96 as the longest, which personally, I don't think this is long enough. I think the breeding time should be a lot longer um, so that it's more sustainable long term with these uh with the breeding functionality so i would uh i would literally like 7x all of these personally but uh that's just me right um because i think that would sustain the economy and the nft population and that sort of thing a lot a lot longer right so you know you know seven times was just you know a a general number thrown out there you know it'd be a one week to start um but you know obviously it's they would have to crunch the numbers and see what would actually make sense but that would be the biggest thing that i would change right off the bat um but we also have okay so the breeding limits this is a nice thing here so the breeding is not only going to cost the honey token like the one benefit that they do have here is there's only one token okay so that is a huge huge plus right there's only the one honey token and that is where you know, these breeding games like, you know, Axie and Pig Axie and Cyball and all that sort of stuff, they've all had the dual token economy with no cap supply on the utility token that's used for breeding and all that sort of stuff. So that's where, you know, the value of the token just went to nothing because it's there's infinite supply. And the more you breed, the more you produce. So it just, you know, it creates hyperinflation of the token as well. So having only one token is a big, big plus. Another additional thing that they did here, which is very nice to see to help with the sustainability as well as the token valuation, all that sort of stuff. Um, you have to have a minimum amount of honey staked in addition to the amount of honey that you have to pay for the actual breeding. So that is a very cool, uh, very good additional um, sort of stipulation that goes with the breeding. So you're going to have to pay, you know, there's only the one token. So the supply is limited, which is going to create you know, demand, you know, when you have, whenever you have a fixed supply of something and there's high demand um, and the supply doesn't change, that drives the value up, right? That's just basic economics 101. So um, that is already a really, really strong positive for this. And then the fact that you have to have honey staked in addition to spending the honey for the breeding, that is a very cool uh, additional element that should help to sustain the value of honey and ideally if these fees are being burned if the supply is being diminished over time if this is deflationary then that is also going to drive the value up over time but i do not know if that's the case yet okay we're gonna we're gonna jump into the honey token after we get through this last little bit here but these are all the breeding things i just wanted to you know go over that because that is my thought process when I'm sort of evaluating these things. The last thing is just uh, you can breed a queen bee by using the royal jelly that we talked about already as well. Okay, and then there's uh, the next up is the hatching, which, you know, there's really nothing big about this. This is just how you're going to turn your egg NFTs into actual uh, bees. Okay, so anyone who wins the Genesis NFT, you are getting a bee egg. Okay, so it's not going to be like the Genesis bee. You're actually going to be able to hatch it. So it's going to be a Genesis bee egg. Um, and then you're going to be able to go to the site basically and hatch your egg into the actual bee NFT. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. And that's all there is to it. Honeyland Marketplace. Okay, so you're going to be able to buy and sell NFTs here. There's going to be a B rental system. So this, again, is great for, you know, gaming guilds like Six Pack Gaming and many others. And uh, basically, it serves as a way for players who can't or don't wish to purchase the starter pack, but would like to play and earn in Honeyland, um, allows them to get into play. It also allows for a way for players who want to play more than just their own bees to earn more. So you could actually have your own colony and be renting bees in addition and just be, you know, grinding the game if if you really like it, that sort of thing, right? Or if you want to earn faster. And then it's also a way for bee owners who can't or don't want to manage their bees to, you know, still make sure they're earning with their stuff, right? So that's kind of the traditional guild model is, you know, they have the capital to invest in the assets and then you know, their members, their players are able to play for free and earn and 
uh, a portion of those earnings goes back to the guild you know for supplying those rentals to them it does say honeyland will have regular limited edition and special item drops that will only be available by redeeming beeswax in the honeyland primary marketplace now i don't really know what beeswax is or how you get it i'm assuming it's a game item that you get from the shards um but i don't remember seeing it personally so that would be a question that i'd have to clarify with the team or you know you guys can ask in the discord as well uh but i'm presuming it's just going to be like an in-game item that you get from those shards and then there's going to be marketplace fees so honeyland collects a two and a half percent fee for all transactions that happen on the marketplace a portion of the honey is collected for these fees um will be burned and the rest will be portioned out for player rewards and honeyland treasury so it is nice that they're going to be building a treasury they're going to be basically recycling marketplace fees back to the rewards pool and then they're going to be burning some so that does create a deflationary model in the honey token which again makes me very bullish on the actual value of the honey token over time especially you know in it in addition to this game you know the the bullishness of a single deflationary token in this game this says it's going to work across all their titles right so they have if they have multiple games and there's only a very fixed supply of this one honey token and they have multiple games multiple different ways to use this honey and a portion of it is constantly being burned so that the supply is very very slowly being decreased over time um that is very very good to sustain and improve the value of their token over time so very big game mall so there's going to be hexagon studios uh this is just kind of about the hexagon studios thing so 30 plus full-time developers including front-end back-end blockchain artists and unity developers honeyland will eventually have dozens of games for players to experience so very very cool as we talked about honeyland will be the main token emission system to introduce honey tokens into the ecosystem all other games will have economies that leverage the honey token to enhance the player's experience and opportunities inside honeyverse so very very wicked to see that um and they plan to introduce a new major title each year along with several snackable casual and hyper casual games to build a gaming ecosystem so it seems like they're gonna have like another big game similar to honeyland each year that's their plan as well as little mini games uh that people are able to i guess utilize honey in as well and then there's gonna be a honeyland game mall so the end result is a complete game ecosystem for players to play honeyland's core play to own missions to earn honey and an entire mall of other games for players to provide unlimited game options and experiences in a short time we imagine players will be able to race their bees with other players battle other players bees in turn-based battle games visit a honeyland casino to test their luck compete in fashion shows with other bee designers compete against um other players in skill-based games word-based games and hundreds of other game options so they're basically you know trying to cater to all different sort of game genres within their honeyland ecosystem or their honey um ecosystem under this hexagon studio so cool to see that that makes me very bullish on uh the actual honey token itself so we're gonna dive into the honey token which you know there's not a whole lot to go over but there is going to be a 1 billion supply okay honey can be staked to unlock in-game opportunities give player access to special missions drops and exclusive in-game items or activities sorry and have governance over the decisions and growth of the project as we already mentioned um with every honey transaction a percent will be collected and portioned for different things you've got you know going back into the rewards for staking honey um going back into the player rewards for the missions and that sort of thing uh being used for development and maintenance of honeyland and then locked in the treasury to ensure the strength and value of honey um over time and give them sort of like a buffer a safety net the burn mechanics so honey is a deflationary token with a max supply of 1 billion honey again very bullish on this idea i think all games that want to introduce their own token models have to have a single token deflationary token model i think that's the only way it will work sustainably over time and be able to hold value of the token and or increase the value over time um yeah i, I the the dual token models with infinite supply of the in-game token just it's inevitable that the the in-game token will go to zero essentially right like if there's infinite supply and like the only way the value can keep up is if the influx of new players exponentially increases faster than the decrease of the token value based on the supply that's being minted in game but with every new player coming in the amount being produced also exponentially increases so yeah it's just it's a failed model 
from the get-go so a single deflationary token is what i think all games that want to introduce and i don't think all nft games should bother having their own in-game token but for those that do implement one um i think this is the way to go okay but that's just me you know obviously not financial advice you got to do your own research and all that i'm just you know voicing my thoughts here so uh these are the burning mechanisms though you got breeding in-game transactions and then special burn events so from time to time players will be incentivized to burn their honey for access to special prizes and events so that's a very cool feature as well they also have anti-whale mechanics so the daily honey token claim for investors and team once the lockup period is over for the investors and team they will begin having access to claim their tokens daily this will prevent a large supply from going into circulation at one time during the month and will rather spread it out evenly over the month this should prevent several large token dumps on the same day which could hurt the value of honey um almost free to play is what they say here so players will be required to upgrade to a beamium account for as little as 30 us dollars paid in solana in order to unlock the full features of the game and unlock honey tokens uh this nominal fee reduces barriers to entry for new players but also serves as an anti-bot mechanism uh players can play in free to play mode if they would like to play a limited version of honeyland or use the b rental system instead of playing with their own bees it is important to note that all fees collected from starter packs will go back into player rewards to build a more sustainable reward system. And then there's locked reward emissions. Player rewards in the form of honey can be earned as soon as the player starts playing Honeyland and can be spent for in-game transactions. However, they will not immediately be available to transfer into their wallet until they reach unlock periods. So there is going to be an unlocking schedule here. Limited reward withdrawals. So honey tokens earned from the following reasons are subject to limited withdrawals, harvesting, land commissions, land entry attack and defense missions and uh the result of any other honey land player reward mechanic so basically any time you earn honey in the game there's going to be a limited withdrawal um system sort of in place okay the time required between withdrawals can be as short as seven days and as long as 14 days players will be able to reduce the time required between um transactions by earning experience staking honey owning honey land passes and other in-game accomplishments tokens that are in a player's account for the following reasons are unlocked so account has met the minimum days required between blockchain transactions uh it's purchased through the decks or other exchanges or it was received from the sale of any marketplace item okay and then locked is used can actually be used for in-game transactions so breeding fusing etc um harvesting commissions hunting entry fees attack missions certain categories of game all um games so this is actually cool so your locked honey that you you know is is locked up for seven to 14 days um and it's kind of stuck in game you don't have to first claim that in order to be able to use it in game for like breeding and stuff like that so that is another really great thing because that was an issue that a lot of these games sort of faced in the past where they had these time restricted limits on withdrawals but you couldn't do anything with the in-game sort of tokens that you used so you know it would force people to like constantly claim the rewards and either just dump them or you know have to wait like seven to 14 days to be able to like reinvest them into the game this way you can kind of earn and use your in-game tokens right away and you can kind of keep it cycling inside the game economy which is what you want in a traditional game right like you don't think of world of warcraft with its gold you don't collect gold to sell it for us dollars to rebuy gold and you know be able to use it in game or you don't expect people to like you know earn gold in wow and then have to wait two weeks until they can actually use the in-game gold that they found you know from hunting in order to like you know buy things in the game or upgrade their characters and that sort of thing so same sort of thing you want to be able to keep the economy within the game running smoothly and keep people kind of reinvesting inside the game you know rather than constantly having to take it out and dump back in uh it makes way more sense to just keep the economy within the game and especially because every time there's transactions in the game you're getting those burning mechanisms those transaction fees and stuff like that that's decreasing the supply over time anyway um so yeah i think again huge huge pluses and benefits on the actual like tokenomics of this okay and then locked honey uh cannot be used for you know swapping liquidity farming any of that stuff right it, that's just kind of makes sense 
Um, this is a breakdown of the tokenomics. So the investors, 7% was in the seed round, private round A, 5% five, um, 5 and this is the prices as well. So one and a half cent in the seed round, uh, 2.8 cents, 3.5 in private B, 5 cents in the public sale. So, um, and that was only 2%. So the seed round investors, you know, already have a 4X on their investment, plus they have triple uh, more than triple three and a half times the supply of the public um so that is interesting there's quite a lot of tokens in the private funding rounds here so this is what 16 21 percent of all the tokens were in the sort of like private rounds so that is something to be aware of that you know even though they have these sort of daily unlocks for the team and the um investors and stuff like that uh that doesn't mean that these guys can't stockpile this for three months and then dump it all at one time so you know if someone dumps five percent of the total token supply 50 million tokens that could definitely have a you know an impact on the token price and you know fluctuate things but um, like I said, over time, as long as the player base is sustained and that sort of thing, the value of the token should hold or you know increase over time. And then there's the 35% towards player rewards, so 350 million tokens, which again, you gotta be mindful that if the whole player rewards are 35%, and just in the private rounds alone, there's like 21%. That's almost the entire player rewards pool, right? There's only like 16% additional to that. So yeah, that's that's just, again, what you want to be um, mindful of. It's nothing that, you know, you can really be concerned or control um, at this stage or anything like that. But uh, yeah, that's just something to uh to be mindful of and then there's also five percent liquidity which i think is huge five percent for reserves and five percent for the treasury so this is a great um great thing that they are starting off with some liquidity already available with treasury with reserves uh, this is always the issue in the new play to earn games there's not enough liquidity and so you know someone claiming a big amount of the game tokens automatically you know fluctuates the price very um very extremely right it's very volatile because of the low liquidity so this having this initial liquidity supply should help reduce the volatility a little bit of the token and then there's obviously their decentralized exchanges where you're going to be able to swap your honey tokens for solana or you know whatever other tokens you uh prefer to so you can swap stake and yield farm you guys can kind of check this out but that's kind of their thing is make honeyland a household name in web3 gaming and introduce crypto and DeFi to millions of people by making it fun and easy to understand over the next three years think big no bigger execute to perfection respect yourself and others and make it fun and then you've got like the core team and again these guys are you know very transparent Corey does a ton of these videos and stuff you know they're showing their face they're doing amas and stuff like that they're not you know hiding behind these you know anonymous avatars kind of thing which we've seen in the past and you can check out you know their linkedin their twitters and all of that sort of stuff and just kind of like vet their backgrounds in the space you know he's been the honeyland uh honeyland ceo for the past year here um you know has done business coaching and all this sort of stuff here so um yeah you guys can check that out about the team but looks like they have a pretty solid this is just like the core team and then they have their development team their advisors and all of that good stuff so that is Honeyland in a nutshell that was a lot I know it was so if you have to go back and like rewatch parts of this I'm gonna timestamp things too so that it's a little bit easier for you to you guys kind of jump around if you want to go back to certain parts but that is everything that this has to offer overall sort of thoughts on this again like I said very very bullish on the actual token value here the main concern is the nft assets the bees i don't know currently how they're going to maintain the value of those nfts okay the land i could see holding value potentially better than the bees themselves but again you need multiple bees to be able to fully take advantage of the game and then there's also the rental options and stuff like that so um yeah i think i think there's some evaluating that they have to do on the breeding model um that would be again that like that's kind of the only concern but very bullish on the actual honey token itself uh the game 
overall sounds solid as well so you know personally very excited to see how this will perform and you know what what will come of this i think it's a very very promising thing but again like i said not financial advice you got to do your own research with this and decide if this is something you want to jump into or not if you want to jump into it you know it's pretty simple like we said you can go over to fractal or magic eden you can pick up a genesis egg and um a land plot as well if you would like and that will kind of get you started in the game or you can wait and see kind of how things work test out on the rental system and that sort of thing and just see you know how the game turns out and if it's something that you want to dive into and invest into uh the only sort of caveat to that is usually the earlier you get into something uh the better sort of risk reward you have in terms of potential upside the later you get into these games um generally the costs may have increased or and or the rewards from them will have decreased so uh yeah you just want to evaluate if it makes sense for you and now it is time to draw the winner of the free genesis egg nft here let's get to it we've got the twitter comment picker here so we're gonna post this in and let's get retweets likes or follows again You've got to have liked the tweet. You've got to be following me as well. Um, not a lot of you did all of those steps. So we are going to see who is going to be the winner. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Hashima 19. Let's go. All right. So I am going to send a dm to you on twitter um i also know you're in the discord server so i may just shoot you a uh, a message on discord we will announce this in the discord as well and get you your free genesis nft egg for honeyland that is dope now if you're wanting a chance to win your own genesis nft egg here is what you're gonna have to do so this one we drew from the retweets and all of that on the on the tweet here okay so you're still gonna have to follow the same steps here right but we are gonna be picking the next one from the comments on the actual youtube video on this youtube video that you're watching right now we are gonna be drawing the winner from it so here's what you're gonna have to do in the comment you are going to have to comment your discord username okay so whatever your either your discord name or your twitter name so that i am able to dm you if you happen to win it so that we can get in contact and get you your free nft okay so you're gonna have to do the same things follow both of us on twitter comment like and sub on this video and make sure you comment with your um with your twitter or your discord whichever you want to uh share there and uh that'll allow me to contact you and liking retweeting tagging three friends on twitter is going to be a requirement as well okay so don't just skip out and just do it on youtube um make sure you're sharing it on twitter as well and of course you got to join the discord again so that we can be in contact with you this is the six pack gaming discord this is the honeyland discord again all these links and all the details will be in the description below okay that is how you will get a chance to win one of your own free genesis nft eggs just like hashima did in today's video all right so that's all you got to do and that is everything for honeyland so i'm pretty pumped about it i don't know though let me know your thoughts in addition to leaving you know entering the giveaway leaving your twitter or discord name down below be sure to smash that thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed and got those notifications turned on so you don't miss in case you win this thing and uh you know all the other games that we're going to be covering in the web3 space to come all right so Thank you guys so, so much for watching. As always, until next time, train hard, game hard, keep making those life-changing gains, and we will see you in the next one. Peace out, everyone.